Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CEC Edusite Live Lecture. Dear friends, uh, with our ongoing series on management accounting, today we would be talking on cost volume profit analysis. This is the 13th lecture in the series. In the first half, we would be discussing on uh, introduction to uh, cost volume profit analysis as well as the limitations and assumptions of um, cost volume profit analysis. Whereas in the second half, we would be discussing on the techniques of uh, cost volume profit analysis. Uh, dear friends, we would like to tell you all that uh, for this discussion. We have once again with us in our studios Dr. Amarjit Kaur. Dr. Amarjit Kaur is a professor of accounting. She is a dean of a management school in one of the reputed institutions. Uh, she has authored numerous books including management accounting and she is a certified management accountant from uh, USA. So, let's welcome our guest Dr. Amarjit Kaur and let's take the series forward. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Edison Lecture. Thank you, thank you, Gitika. Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to viewers. Uh, this is, as Gitka said, 13th lecture in the series on management accounting and we would be talking about a very important technique available in management accounting. It is known as an important tool for profit planning and known as cost volume profit analysis, shortly is called as CVP analysis. Okay, so to begin with, I, am, I have few questions to you. What do you think, uh, what managers, f you know, have to face in day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, operations? Yeah, so they have to make decisions. So, the most important thing is that managers have to face different situations involving decision making, right? So, they have, and if we talk about precisely about managers who are looking after sales, you know, they would be talking about or they would be looking uh, for what should be the selling price, how many units they can sell con you know, con comfortably, what should be the mix of the sales if company is dealing uh, in more than one product, the product line comprises more than one product, right? So, then the question comes of the mix of those products, now, how much percentage of sales should be of X product and how much percentage of sales should be of Y product. So, uh, these are the number of, uh, you know, uh, decisions which come uh, come in front of uh, a manager in day to day life of, uh, you know, his working in a business. So, uh, not only that, you know, uh, if we if we look around, we have to think of how should we be responding to the situation if there is a change in the external environment. Uh, suddenly, last week we all know what has happened on the late evening of 8th uh, in the country. We all are, you know, just uh, watching carefully, are responding, are very curious and, you know, are well aware of what, what is happening around in the last one week uh, in the country, in India itself. You know, so, so is true for businesses. Even they need to look around the environmental factors, you know, environmental which are factors which are not in direct control of a business but has a very, very strong impact, may have very strong impact on the operations of the business and accordingly we have to take decisions. Uh, you know, uh, so that we could respond uh, to the best possible manner uh, to any such situation. Uh, this cost volume profit analysis is basically a technique which deals with uh, selling price, sales volume, expenses which comprises two kind of expenses, fixed and variable both and then the sales mix. So, the technique is, is a systematic method of analyzing the interaction between these factors which I just said and their effect on profit of a business, right? So, that is why we call it as profit planning tool, a very important tool where we plan for our profit and we see that, that how different combinations of these factors sales volume, sales mix, selling price, variable cost, fixed cost will affect my profit. It means we can reach to certain you know, uh, formula and can play with 
any of the factor by changing any value in them and we can find out the result on our profits every business works for profit right profit maximization wealth maximization for shareholders and profit maximization is a very very important objective of running any business now uh, this profit maximization is or profit uh, is dependent upon uh, many factors as just i said few are in your control in your direct control and few of them are not in your control so uh, right away we are talking about those factors which are very very direct and you have a very good control barring a few but most of them are in direct control of yours right so uh, let's talk about this technique this technique uh, cvp analysis has been defined uh, by many i i have in my own book have defined this cvp analysis as uh, to find out the relationship between change in volume if we could you know show the slides to viewers it says to find out the relationship between change in volume change in sale price and expenses on the profit of a firm right a systematic and a very effective technique which is available in management accounting and is known as cvp analysis if you refer to the second statement it says cvp analysis is a systematic method of examining the relationship between selling price total sales revenue expenses and profit the other way we can say that cvp analysis deals with the prices cost structure sales volume and it identifies profit figures with one or the other combination of these factors so it means we can actually identify what would be my profit if i change my selling price what would be my profit if i change my sales mix what would be my profit if i decide to you no know, consume raw material which is of higher cost or of lower cost if i you know i i hope you remember that cost of raw material is a variable cost if you remember an example of car we took in the last lecture or example of a pen where we talk about refill is a variable cost we talked about tires in a car, in a car are variable costs you know which is directly related with the production of number of units produced in a company you know so production of un- units uh, of any product Uh, would decide the consumption of material and labor which is directly related to the product and is known as direct material and direct labor cost and they both are basically variable cost with you know with special reference to india us there are countries which do not take direct labor cost as a, a variable cost for example china is is one of the example one of the countries right so the point i am making out is here that we can find out the profit figure by changing any of the uh, elements i am talking and if to- if we what would be my profit if i change my variable cost in terms of material by consuming a cheaper material or by consuming a costlier material in my production so how will it affect my total cost and how will it affect my profit figures same way we can think of what would be the effect on my profits if i decide to carry a new uh, marketing campaign a promotional campaign no uh, i need to emphasize here that uh, expenditure on promotional cam- campaign is a fixed cost for a business so it means we can find out the effect of change in fixed cost variable cost your sales volume and selling price on the profit of your business and and that is what is cvp analysis uh, you know doing for us as a profit planning tool now moving forward we would like to talk about elements which are very very important elements which are involved in uh, cvp analysis there are five uh, elements i ho- i hope i have already mentioned for all uh, you know about each of them so far uh just to say uh, they are uh, selling price per unit uh, variable cost per unit fixed cost in total then you have your sales volume and sales mix so these are the five elements we can show you the slide so that if in case you want to note down you can have a have a look at the slide so uh, the slide is there in front of you which says these five elements right 
So I can just repeat because you could not see the slide. Uh, selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, uh, fixed cost in total, uh, your sales volume and sales mix. These five elements are important ones when we carry this analysis of cost volume profit. Uh, moving forward, now how does this, this technique work? Let's just refer to uh, the discussion where we classified cost. Cost is classified on many bases and one of the classification of cost is based on, on the decision making. Uh, under decision making, we classify cost of a business into variable and fixed cost. Variable cost as we know changes you know in total but it remains common per unit. Uh, the cost of one uh, say for the example uh, in, if, you are, if you are manufacturing a mobile cost of one uh, chip inside the mobile if it is 2000 rupees. So if I am manufacturing one mobile I would be using one chip and uh, I would be paying 2000 for that and if I produce 10 mobile sets, handsets, then I would be spending how much? 2000 into 10, 20,000 on the cost of material, which is a variable cost. And if I have a production manager who is supervising the production of my handsets, mobile phones, then his salary is constant up, no, up to a certain period and uh, for a given level of activity. So, it does not matter uh, we are producing 10 units or 100 units, his salary remains same and this is an example of fixed cost. So, for the purpose of uh, decision making, we divide the cost into variable and fixed. We, we do not talk about, I have not talked about uh, mixed cost yet. Mixed cost is either uh, you know, associated or correlated with variable cost or fixed cost. So we have to have only two categories for the purpose of cost volume profit analysis which is variable and fixed right. Now what happens uh, we have selling price fixed by us of course based on many factors uh, of a product let us say x amount let us say 10 rupees and we have variable cost let us say uh, 8 rupees. So, variable cost means cost of material which is directly used, cost of direct wages and direct expenses that is what variable cost is. So, now variable cost is total uh, in, uh, in rupees 8 and uh, selling price is 10. Now, the difference of these two that is selling price minus variable cost is known as a contribution margin. So, we call it as CM. So, CM or contribution margin is basically the difference between the two uh, selling price and variable cost and is very very important element for the purpose of studying CVP analysis. Now, the CVP analysis is not a small thing. It is something very very important which helps to answer many questions like you know what would happen if I change my selling price from X amount to Y amount. Uh, no, what would happen to my profits if I am not able to sell X number of units? What would be happening to my profit if I change my uh, sales volume from X number to Y number? What would happen to my profits if I change my fixed cost for, from X amount to Y amount and so on? You know, number of questions can be answered by CVP analysis. And that is why we do call this analysis as what if analysis. What if I change x factor? What if uh, you know if uh, if I change y factor? What if that you know anything or, or the combination of more than one factor is being changed? So that's what the CVP analysis is, right? So now moving forward, now we will talk about assumptions under CVP analysis. This is an analysis tool very important but it is not free of assumptions and basically assumptions would become limitations as well which is true for any theory uh, you know existing in any literature. Uh, so uh, let us go for the assumptions under this CVP analysis. The first and the foremost assumption is this that we assume selling price would remain constant uh, for a given period of time 
where when we are carrying this cvp analysis this is uh, you know you you would you would say no this is not a very practical assumption and i do agree with you this is not a very practical assumption but no none of the theory can uh, can be you know free of assumptions and uh, so is true with cvp analysis so will you will have to accept this so uh, selling price is constant that is the first and the foremost assumption under cvp analysis uh it means uh, for the period of the study when we are carrying cvp analysis this uh this selling price is assumed to be constant for that period now the second assumption we carry uh, is costs are linear now what does it means costs are linear means uh you know there are either the variable uh, cost or fixed cost uh, present in in the cost structure of a company which is not very true i do agree this is something i have already addressed in my previous lecture so but we have no choice then to put semi variable costs or mixed costs either under variable category or mixed category and this is assume that only two categories of cost exist and the relationship between the cost is linear right so i hope you understand with what linearity means so this is another assumption uh, which is an important assumption uh, under cost uh, the cvp analysis moving forward as you would have looked at earlier that another assumption is this that we assume sales mix for the period of study remains constant what does it mean if a company has been selling 1000 units of x product and 1500 units of y product and 2000 units of z product so if the company has three products in the product line x y z and the company was selling 1000 in uh, uh, is to 1500 is to 2000 it means 10 is to uh, 15 is to 20 ratio uh, then we assume this ratio remains constant for that period uh, you know of the study when so otherwise it would change which is again not very true in practical world but this analysis can be applied only with these assumptions so that's why uh, you know i am discussing these assumptions uh, then the another very important assumption is that uh, that whatever is produced by a company in the given period is sold so what is the repercussion of this assumption yes the repercussion would be that there would not be any inventory left unconsumed or unsold right so whatever is produced is sold means the case of no inventory right so this is another assumption that we we assume there is no stock pending either from the previous period or in the current year it means no opening or closing inventory is in hand uh, when we are carrying this assumption uh, whatever is produced is sold sales are equal to production and i do agree it again it is not practically a true but believe me uh, you know when you will learn how to apply this technique cvp analysis you would really uh, you know uh, you feel very very good about that you have learned something important because uh, even after the assumptions uh, whatever the outcome this cvp or whatever the benefit the cvp analysis gives to managers uh, is, is immense right so that's why i am emphasizing upon uh, that we should all be uh, you know listening very carefully today uh, to this new technique of management accounting so moving forward now i would talk about limitations of uh, cvp analysis uh, you know as we know the cvp analysis by this time i hope you all know that it is a technique which presents different scenarios in front of a managers helps managers identify the profit figures with one or the other combinations right so uh, so given these uh, given the importance and and then we talked about assumptions and assumptions are uh, not true we do agree so what what are the limitations of cvp analysis the cvp analysis has certain limitations and assumptions are the primarily you know limitations for the for the analysis the first limitation is that we have a number of assumptions and the first assumption that that uh, co that fixed cost remains constant 
and this is not true as a, as we just discussed a minute ago we can elaborate this with the exam with the help of some example uh, say for example uh, we all know uh, in in india as of date the seventh pay commission has been introduced has been uh, applied or implemented by few of the state for example haryana happens to be the first state uh, in the country uh, which has implemented seventh pay commission to to the employees of the state uh, now if x person was drawing x amount as salary uh, say 80000 right his salary is an example if he was a production manager sales manager uh, general manager his salary is uh, you know uh, a, a, an example of fixed cost right so we are assuming he was drawing salary of 80000 under sixth pay commission the last pay commission we had in the country and now if haryana has implemented seventh pay commission his salary would go up by about 30% this is what uh, the analysts say so somewhere about 30% so it's not very exactly i am quoting so i'm just referring to the articles i have gone through in the recent past so approximate 30% rise in 80 80000 of salary means another 24000 so his salary would be now 1 lakh 4000 if the company in which he is working has implemented seventh pay commission right now the salary is a fixed cost because we are assuming it is given to production manager or to sales manager or to general manager and it is a period cost is a fixed cost for the company no assumption is in the cvp analysis that fixed cost remains constant now this fixed cost remains constant for certain period of time if the pay commission for example is implemented or reviewed after every 5 years so this is constant for 5 year if company has let's forget about the pay commission independent of the pay commission if the company has a policy to increase salaries by 10% after every 2 year after every year right so it means the fixed cost is constant only for a particular period it could be true even for a given level of activity you know it's not only for period there are two important factors when we talk about the constant uh, part in the fixed cost one was period i i hope you are clear with that example another is with the help of activity say for example we were paying 80000 under six pay commission for x uh, you know for a employee working in xyz company so if the production was 20000 units of mobile handsets we were we were uh, you know paying uh, and we were requiring only one production manager and we were paying 80000 now after after 20000 units of handset say there is another demand there is additional demand and now we have uh, to produce 25000 units one production line cannot uh, uh, you know produce more than 20000 units that's why the salary of that guy 80000 was constant for the given activity of production which is 20000 units but the moment we have to go for additional 5000 units if the company decides to you know after there is a possibility that we we would have increased sale and the general, and the management decides to go for additional production of 5000 they would have to set up a new plant new production you know facilities and there there is requirement for an another production manager who would be looking after the second production facility it means there is a there is a cap on the capacity of a production manager that he can supervise only production maximum up to 20000 unit so his salary 80000 is constant to the given level of activity of 20000 the moment company produces more unit after 20000 units we need additional produ- production capacity and one more production ga- manager who would be supervising the production right so this is so there are two situation one is it is you know fixed cost with reference to time or period and second is fixed cost with reference to the level of activity and the best level of activity to comprehend the situation is the production capacity or the or the production facility right so same could be true for the shop floors 
if 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 a, a automobile uh, manufacturer is uh, producing uh, say uh, uh, scooters or uh, or your you know cars and x model is produced in one show floor and that show floor has a limitation that these many number of units can be produced so we would have one fabricator or one production manager supervise or supervisor supervising that show floor but if we need more show floor for the same model then definitely we need additional fabricator or supervisor uh, no if if the uh, the setup is quite far away and there's a limitation that supervisor cannot supervise two show floors at a time right so if it is not shared if we require this is the requirement uh, because of the specification of the product specification of the production process then we would need additional supervisor and then there would be additional cost of his salary and that is based on or is influenced by the capacity by the activity you know activity in terms of production so this is a good example uh, to understand that this is a limitation of cvp analysis which assumes fixed cost are constant they are not constant uh, beyond a certain level of activity and beyond a certain period of time we we we, we as an employee go to our uh, employer to increase our salary after some time you know this is how it is true uh, now the second limitation of cvp analysis is this that it doesn't uh, consider important factors like cap cap uh, capital employed and the production technology we do consider uh, you know many factors but there are two very important factors because our profit is influenced by the capital employed as well so uh, if we talk about especially return on in investment it has a direct bearing on how much capital has been employed in the business so which is completely ignored and technology you know the cost would vary based on the extent of technology used in a business so this another important factor which is which becomes limitation in the cvp analysis uh then uh, the last uh, which is also a assumption which we have already discussed the last limitation of cvp analysis is this that this assumes you know production and sales are equal are uh, same which is not true uh, we have always a different value of uh, sales what we produce is generally not been sold or may, we may sell uh, more this year than the production of the current year by using the opening stock which we have in our hand from the previous year so these are the limitations so i hope you you could gather the what what is the concept of cvp analysis i will just reinforce this is a profit planning tool which helps managers uh, to decide or to find out what would be the profit uh, you know if any factor out of the given five factors which is uh, sales volume sales price variable cost fixed cost and sales mix is changed right so this is all uh, in this session thank you so very much for watching us thank you very good afternoon to you all and welcome back in, uh, in the second module on cost volume profit analysis uh, 
Uh, in this session, we will talk about techniques uh, available in CVP analysis. In fact, we will learn that how does the CVP analysis work when it comes to profit planning. So, there are two techniques which we use under CVP analysis. One is known as contribution margin analysis or technique and second is known as break even analysis or break even point technique. So, uh, let's talk about the first one contribution margin technique. This uh, contribution margin is something which I just referred few minutes ago. Uh, contribution margin is the difference between selling price and variable cost per unit. It could be talked in total as well. So, total sales value minus total variable cost for a business for a product is basically contribution margin in total. But most of the times you would f see that we would prefer to use uh, contribution margin per unit, right? So, uh, this contribution margin is a very, very important uh, value to be known to any uh, manager. How come? You know, contribution margin is something which will help you to decide how much, uh, you know, uh, profits you would have after selling X number of units. Why? You know, if let's pay attention on the discussion now. Your sales are in giving you revenue which is supposed to cover your variable cost and your fixed cost both, right? If there is a surplus in the sales revenue, <coughs> that is there to give you profit. So, if your sales revenue is less than the variable cost and the fixed cost, then you are going to incur losses, right? Now, if your sales revenue is just equal to variable and fixed cost, the sum of these two, variable cost and fixed cost, basically you are breaking even. You do not have any profit or loss. Knowing this much is more than enough for any manager to plan profits. But the problem is, you know, it, it is not that easy as it, it seems like. Problem is not with the CM technique. The problem is the managers do not pay attention on costs. They do not pay, you know, desire attention on accumulating variable costs and fixed cost. Rather, they are not able to differentiate between the two. So, so the crux of the matter is that this technique would be very, very useful provided managers know to differentiate that which cost to a business is a fixed cost, which cost is a variable cost, right? If we know that, only then we can apply this technique uh, effectively because this is the essence. We have to accumulate cost under two, cate two categories before we decide to apply CVP analysis, right? So, uh, no, this CVP, uh, C, the CM uh, can be used to calculate one ratio which is known as CM ratio. So, CM which, I, which we just said contribution margin, not the chief minister, right? So, contribution margin divided by selling price multiplied by 100 gives you CM ratio. So, this is, it, this is there on the slide, you can have a look uh, on, on the slide. And the second, uh, and the second uh, technique is break-even analysis, so uh, which can be presented either in a mathematical equation or in a graph form. So that's why we call them as mathematical approach and graphical approach to break-even analysis. Now this break-even analysis, the mathematical approach, uh, you know, I just said profits are equal to sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost. Right? So it, it means if we subtract our variable and fixed cost from sales, the, the remainder is our profit. Now, moving forward, we would uh, talk about this break-even analysis. Have a look at the slide. So, I am just expanding the same equation that profits are equal to sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost or it can be expressed that sales is equal to variable expenses plus fixed expenses plus profit, right? Now, conceptually, we all know that break-even point is a point where there is no profit, no loss. It means this profit, which is marked with this arrow red, is marking, is indicating this profit, this would be equal to zero, right? So, if we want to know the break-even point of a company, our sales would be equal to just the sum of the variable and the fixed expenses, right? 
Now this this could be understood that how do we apply break even analysis in a business with the help of one small case I am I am taking a hypothetical case of ABC limited and the information we are assuming is this that company is into manufacturing of cycles by cycles and uh, we have gathered the data of variable and the fixed cost and we know currently how many units uh, the company is uh, manufacturing and selling. So let us have a look at the case. Uh, we have sales 500 units of bikes right so bicycles uh, the selling price per unit is 500. So, that is given so in total and in per unit. So, just you refer to the title of this column, it says total value, it says per unit value and the last column says a percentage value, right. So, we are assuming company is selling 500 bikes at the rate of 500 per unit. It means the sales for the company is 2,50,000. You can express it in dollars or in rupee or any other denomination, right, any other currency. So, now the variable cost data has been gathered and we know the company has total $300 uh, dollars per unit or per bicycle cost on variable uh, uh, you know components. So, this is uh, if we multiply the number of units produced 500, so it is 1,50,000 in total. Now, as we just discussed the difference between you know sale price and uh, variable cost is known as contribution margin. So, here is the contribution margin. So, if we calculate contribution margin in per unit, it is 200. If you calculate this contribution margin in total, it is 1 lakh dollars in this case, right. So, after we have reached to contribution margin, we subtract fixed cost out of it, which is 80,000 for the company. Of course, we, we need to gather this information for the business. And the remainder is known as NOI, net operating income for the business. The sales is here 100% and variable cost, you know, in percentage to, in re, with ratio to sales is 60%, which is 300 divided by 500, which gives you 60%. And we can calculate this CM ratio, which is 40%. How come? Uh, we divided the contribution margin 200 with the selling price 500 and multiply it by 100, it gives you 40%. Kindly note down these values because they are important and I shall be referring to them for the remaining 20 minutes of this lecture. So, just have a look again at the selling price we assume 500, variable cost for the cycle we assume 300 dollars, the contribution per unit is coming out 200 and the in, in percentage it is coming out 40%, right. Now, let us move forward. If we have to apply this break even analysis, right, how would we express this? We, we just referred that break even uh, in break even sales are equal to variable cost plus fixed cost and no profit or loss, it means plus minus zero. So, that is what the break even point is. So, if I have to put the same values which are given in this uh, case, let us let's have a look uh, on the slide. We are putting sales is equal to variable expenses plus fixed expenses plus minus profit or loss. So, it means 500 Q, Q is the quantity I am referring to is equal to 300 Q that is quantity of units sold. So, into variable cost which is 300 plus 80,000 fixed cost. So, that is uh, that's what we are uh, you know uh, just uh, taking the data from the example or from the case we just referred to. So, which means sales of uh, selling price 500. So, total sales what? Selling price into the quantity sold. So, selling price is 500 dollar into quantity is equal to variable cost per unit into quantity plus the fixed cost. Since <coughs> at break even point profits would be 0, so that is why we are writing plus 0. So, you, you just can refer Q is the number of bikes sold here in this case, 500 uh, is the unit price, selling price, 300 is unit variable expense and 80,000 is the fixed cost. So, how can we calculate break even point? So, just by solving this equation, 
you know 500 into q is equal to 300 into q plus 800 it means if i take this 300 on on the left hand side of the equation so that so 500 minus 300 q would be 200 q is equal to 80000 so we can solve this for calculating q's value so q would be 80000 divided by 200 dollars per bike it means the company would break even if company sells 400 units so this is what the break even point in quantity right so uh, so why i'm emphasizing on the word quantity because we use contribution margin uh, per unit in this example, we, we do have the data of contribution margin in dollars, contribution margin in per unit. So, we did not uh, calculate contribution margin <coughs> in value, rather we calculated, uh, we calculated break even point in terms of uh, units. Now, the same thing can be calculated uh, in terms of dollar value or rupee value. So, uh, if we have to calculate break even point in terms of rupees or in terms of dollar, what do we do? In that case, instead of using the contribution margin per unit, which was 300 in this case, we should be using contribution margin ratio, which was 60 percent. If you remember, I, uh, I requested you to note down those values, which I showed you just a minute or two minutes ago. Right? So, I hope you had noted them down. So, contribution margin per unit was 300, contribution margin ratio was 40 percent and variable co uh, cost ratio was 60 percent. So, if we have to calculate uh, this break even point in rupees or in dollars which means, it, which means in, in currency value, then what do we do? We would be using the same equation, just have a look. But only difference would be that instead of using uh, you know uh, the contribution margin per unit, here we are using uh, the contribution margin ratio uh, and we are using you know variable cost ratio. So, uh, variable cost ratio was 60 percent, multiply it by the Q, Q or X or A whatever you want to assume that is number of units sold. So, that gives you the variable expenses in total, you would add the fixed expenses into that and you can solve that equation and you will get the value of x, right. So, the value of x can be calculated, the x is again here the break even point, I have purposefully you know, differentiated between q and x, q I used when we want to know the break even point in number of units and x we are using when we want to find out the break even point in terms of value. So, how many, um, how much should be the sales for this company ABC limited if a company wants to break even. So, after solving this equation the 60 percent into x <coughs> plus 80,000. So, uh, so, after solving this equation your 1x minus this point x, point 0.6x, it means 0.4x is equal to 80,000. So, x divided by, you know, uh, x would be equal to 80,000, which is your fixed cost divided by 40 uh, percent, 0.4, right, gives you uh, in value 200,000 dollars or 2 lakhs dollars. So, it means this company ABC would have to sell uh, total uh, bikes, the value of total bikes uh, 2 lakhs to, to uh, you know uh, to recover its variable and fixed cost or you may say to reach to the break even point. So, that's, that's how this technique of break even uh, uh, analysis is used under, under CVP analysis. Now, the second technique is contribution margin uh, technique. Uh, as I just said few minutes ago, contribution margin is the difference between uh, selling price and variable cost. With the help of a contribution margin per unit, we can calculate break even point in units. So, this is the second way. The first way was when we were using equation, right? And the second way I am talking about when we, we use this contribution margin method and it has two formulas in it. Uh, one is contribution margin calculating uh, for, for finding out number of units uh, to, uh, to break even and second method is used uh, uh, you know uh, to find out the break even point in terms of rupees or dollars. 
So what do we do? We simply divide the fixed cost with contribution margin per unit and multiply it uh, with uh, you know and find out the value of break even point in number of units. So if in the example of ABC limited how much was our fixed cost? 80,000 you are right and how much was our contribution margin per unit? 300. So if we, if we divide fixed cost of the company with contribution margin per unit then the answer you get is the break even point in units and this is known as contribution margin technique. Now you want to answer uh, in terms of value not in terms of units. So in that case we would be using the second formula break even point in terms of rupees. So here fixed expenses are divided by the contribution margin ratio. So, so the difference you can find out in the first one when we want the answer in units we are dividing the fixed cost with contribution margin per unit and the second one when we want con uh, the answer in rupees or in dollars we divide fixed expenses with contribution margin ratio right. So I hope you could get, uh, understand that how do we use this contribution margin technique to find out break even uh, point for a business either in terms of units or in terms of value, dollar value or rupee value or any currency wherever we are working you know, depending upon the country. Now we would talk about that uh, this contribution margin for the company here would be how much? The fixed cost 800 and the contribution margin per unit was 200 not 300 as I just referred. So 500 was uh, the selling price, 300 was the variable cost to correct and 200 would be the difference uh, as contribution margin. It means the company would break even if uh, it is selling 400 bikes and in terms of ru rupees or dollars company would break even if the company is selling uh, 200 uh, lakhs uh, of uh, you know worth of uh, bikes or if the sales value is 200 lakhs. So both you know uh, techniques either break even uh, point analysis or contribution margin analysis I have given you same answer. If you notice the answers are not different either you use the first one break even equation or you use contribution margin analysis technique the answers uh, to break even point or broken one sales in dollar were same 400 bikes and 2 lakhs dollars the answer was same right. Now let's move forward and just have a look at this one example just to recheck just to check either you could gather this null, you know this technique or not. So I have just had a quiz uh, in front of you just read this example. Uh, coffee latch is an espresso stand in an office building, right? The average selling price of a cup of the coffee is dollar one point four nine. The average variable expenses per cup is uh, thirty six point uh, thirty six dollar, or you may call it as thirty six cents. The average fixed expense per month for that espresso stand is thirteen hundred dollars. The, on an average 21 cups are sold each month. What is the break even sales in units? How would you calculate? Yes, just think for a second. We would need contribution margin per unit or contribution margin ratio, right? So if we have to find out the answer in unit, the question was in units. So it means we need contribution margin per unit. That you are right. So which means selling price 1.49 minus the variable cost of 0.36 uh, dollar is uh, what is your contribution margin and divide the fixed cost of 1300 with the difference of these two and you get the answer right. So your answer would be 1150 cups of coffee needed to be sold by this stall in a, in a business office. Uh, the when, when our fixed cost is 1300 units and our selling price is 1.49 and our variable cost was 36 cent 0.36 dollar right. So which is 1300 divided by the difference of these two which is your contribution margin so which comes out to be 1.13 per cup it means the business needs to sell 1150 cups 
to break even and how many how many units company this this stand is selling 1300 dollars uh, 1300 cups a month it means the remaining cups which is 1300 minus 1150 the so difference is basically uh, you know you are the profit uh, you are earning on on the remainder of the sales so one 1300 minus uh, uh, minus 1150 which is 150 units multiplied by the contribution margin per unit is basically your absolute profit for the business because your fixed cost has already been, rec been recovered your variable cost has already been recovered so after the break even point whatever is been earned you know by the business the contribution margin per unit beyond break even point sales kindly mark my words contribution margin per unit beyond your break even point sales contributes to the con profits in absolute terms right so your profit would go uh, up you know by the number of units sold multiplied by the contribution margin beyond break even point that is the bottom line so it's very very important that we increase our sales beyond break even point as much as possible so that your because why there's a motivation i just has just emphasized i just have uh, you know uh, shared that uh, beyond a break even point uh, you know whatever your contribution margin is uh, you you multiply it with the number of units sold beyond break even point and the product is your total profit in hand right so moving forward now let's talk about uh, how can we find out target profits we call it as target profit analysis and if I take the example of the company ABC Limited, ABC wants to know how many bikes to be sold to earn a profit of 100 lakh. So we have one formula with, with us and which is we calculate sales to earn target profit. So these are the sales not at break even point mind you. These are the, these are the sales or we may call it as target sales or targeted sales to earn targeted profit. So we use the same equation which is variable expenses plus fixed expenses plus profit. Now the profits are not zero. Why? Because we are not calculating break even point. What are we calculating? We are calculating a desired profit amount of 1 lakh. Right? So what do we do? We add variable expenses plus fixed expenses plus profit right and if we solve this equation we can find out the answer that how many units to be sold so that we have a margin of 1 lakh unit so let's solve this equation so sales would sales are 500 quantity this q uh, 300 uh, per unit and then multiplied by number of uh, units to be sold because q is what we have to solve right 500 is the selling price we know q is something which we are solving uh, this equation for and variable expenses 300 per unit we know q quantity per unit uh, quantity uh, sold plus 80000 fixed cost plus 1 lakh desired profit so it means 500 q minus 300 q comes out to be 200 q is equal to 80000 plus 100 180000 so you divide this 180,000 by this 200 then you get the answer to Q would be 900 bikes. So company needs to sell 900 bikes if wants to know uh, earn a profit of 100,000 or 1 lakh. So this is what is known as targeted sales to find out uh, or, or to know how much uh, should we be selling, how many units should we be selling. Uh, to earn a target profit of any amount given to the company. So this is important tool because as a sales manager, as a sales executive even in a business nowadays, everyone is given targets. Give me these many units or give me this much profit, you know. So, so both way targets are given either in terms of number of units or in terms of profit value. So if you are an executive, if you are just started a business, uh, started working as a new management trainee or a sales executive and you have been given target. So what should you be doing? You should be first analyzing the course, 
should be dividing the total cost of the of the business you know which is in your control under variable and fixed component then should be calculating a contribution margin per unit uh, and in percentage uh, uh, for the product you are in charge of you are you are responsible for and then you should be using this technique either break even uh, ratio uh, no equation or this contribution margin uh, uh, technique the both are fine but cm ratio is more easy more comfortable uh, that i have seen managers using contribution margin technique more often than break even point technique right basically break uh, contribution margin is technique is extension of break even uh, equation right so once you know variable cost and fixed cost only then you can apply contribution margin analysis uh, so just add the targets given to you in the fixed cost so if you have been given that i need 5 lakhs of profit from you in this month so you are under pressure and you you need to work so you need not to work very hard to know that how many units to be sold knowing that how many units to be sold is not that difficult once you know the fixed cost and the variable cost just simply add the total targets given to you in the fixed cost and divide it with the contribution margin per unit or contribution margin ratio you will find out the value of the sales to be made or number of units to be sold to earn the targets given to you right so that's why i was emphasizing this technique is very very important because this give quick results quick answers to that to the working people they need not to struggle with because this simply compiles data in a easy format and then answers that how many units should be sold where would the business break even these are the these are the answers which are given easily by this technique right moving forward let's let's take this same example of abc limited so if the targets uh, you know if the fixed cost we know was 80000 the target profit was 100 lakh uh, 1 lakh 100000 or 1 lakh so we just can divide it by the number of units you know uh, 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 per, uh, of margin that is 200 uh, dollars per unit uh, of margin so gives you answer in bikes 900 bikes right so which is basically uh, known as contribution margin technique to know the targeted sales to earn targeted profits so 80000 fixed cost plus 1 lakh target profit divided by the contribution margin per unit which was 200 and you got the answer in bikes if the same answer you want to get into units then what would you be doing so you would be you know dividing uh, this contribution margin uh, ratio uh, this total fixed cost and your target profits with contribution margin ratio so here instead of 200 bikes you would be using the contribution margin ratio which was 40% and your answer would be in terms of dollars in that case so that's the only difference uh, between contribution margin ratio or contribution margin per unit your answer would be either per unit or in total value of dollar or rupees right so this is how we use this contribution margin uh, analysis uh, for uh, you know uh, finding out the target profits for a business we will just uh, take this last example uh, here which was just shown to you in, in a minute before this which was the same example we used to calculate uh, contribution margin uh, ratio and break even point now i we can use the same example to find out the target sales to target uh, to earn target profits right so uh, data was shown to you i hope i hope you noted that down and you can solve it as you know as a assignment as a work at home so for a practice to find out what should be uh, the sales for this uh, you know coffee stall in the business if the target profits given are 2500 dollars a month i would request uh, you know uh, the team to show this slide again uh, for, a, for 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 a while only so this data is there in front of you once again just note it down and because the targets are 2500 dollars so add 
the fixed cost with the given target and divide it with the contribution margin and you will find out the answer is coming out that we should be selling 3363 units to earn profit of $2500 per month. So is this not a very important tool for you to know you want to start a business you are already working in a business that's the example we took but if you want to start up a business a small uh, small shop a small business you need you actually can work in advance well in advance that uh, this is my variable cost this is my fixed cost and then these many units should i be selling that's only after that i would be able to earn x amount of profit so, so I hope uh, you would be using this technique in your uh, work life, either as a businessman or as an employee of a company. Thank you so very much. Now we would like to thank Dr. Amarjeet Kaur for her precious inputs to the lecture and dear friends, uh, your feedbacks are also very, very important. So keep writing us and keep watching us and contact us at info.cc at the rate We will be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so very thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much.